Hi, I'm Gary Fish. I'm the state horticulturist and I supervise the plant health programs at the Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry. And we're here today to look at uh, stilt grass, which is a, a very invasive plant, which we're, we're very concerned about. And it is one of the 33 plants that we regulate. And part of my job is to make sure that the invasive plants that are on the list of 33 do not sell plants are not sold to people and not moved around. Most of them are plants that you would actually buy and plant in your landscape, which you can't buy anymore. A few of them are ones that we call hitchhiker plants. And this particular stilt grass is one of those hitchhiker plants. It's not ornamental enough for you know, someone to want to buy it to, to actually plant in their landscape, but because of its seeds being light and easy to transfer and get into the pots or the root balls, it's easy for it to hitchhike along. And we're very concerned about it because it will cause problems in the forest, especially. It'll prevent plants from germinating. You will lose uh, the spring ephemeral plants and other understory plants. And as it gets really dense, it will actually stop regeneration of the forest. And in certain situations, when we have drought, this really thick growth can become a, a severe fire hazard. Like with all other invasive plants, it's really important to look very carefully when you're uh, buying plants at a, a nursery to make sure that they don't have hitchhiking plants with them. And they would you know, want to look for any kind of signs of grasses or other weeds that may be in those plants and let the nursery owner know that there's an infestation there and don't choose those particular plants to put into your landscape or wherever you're going to put them. And other ways that you can prevent spreading is that if you are in an area where you find it, uh, make sure that you brush your shoes off, brush your, your pants off before you go to another site that's not infested so that you don't bring those seeds into another area. And it's really important to, you know, make sure that the plants that you buy, no matter where you buy them or, you know, whether you're, you're trading them or something like that, that you're not trading or selling a plant or buying a plant that has weeds included inside the pot or in the root ball. Nancy Olmstead, I work for the Maine Natural Areas Program within the Maine Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. I uh, help to advise landowners on how to manage invasive plants, and I also survey for invasive plants and deal with them on state of Maine properties. So uh, I'd like to talk a little about how you might tell stilt grass apart from other grasses. One of the things that you can look for is that with our grasses, like in our lawns and stuff, those usually have their leaves all from the base of the plant. Whereas uh, stilt grass has a central stem, if you can see on the, on the plant that I'm holding here, and the leaves occur uh, alternately or one after the other um, going up the stem of the plant. So that's one uh, key difference. And on the leaves themselves, uh, another key trait of stiltgrass is a silvery um, line down the center of the leaf. And this silvery line is little hairs that are reflective. And so um, on almost every leaf of stiltgrass, you can clearly see this silvery line in approximately the middle of the leaf. So that's another key trait. Uh, the leaf, uh, excuse me, the stem of stiltgrass can start to turn a little reddish at this time of the season, which can also be helpful. So that's later in the season, there can be a little bit of that reddish color along the stem. Um, in terms of the leaf shape and length, um, the leaves tend to be about two to four inches long and they taper at both ends. So that can be helpful because some of our native grasses are uh, longer compared to how wide they are. Another thing about stilt grass is that it's not uh, sticky or hairy at all when you feel it. So uh, along the edges of the leaves and along the stem, it feels pretty smooth. Uh, whereas some of our native grasses are rough to the touch because they have stiff hairs either on the stem or along the leaf. So again, stilt grass feels smooth when you touch the leaves and the stems. Stilt grass, um, when it starts to go to seed, the top of the stem sort of swells and uh, eventually you'll see one to three spikes of flowers that eventually, if pollinated, turn into seeds. And so this plant you can see has three little spikes. They look a little bit like crabgrass, uh, but um, generally uh, shorter. Um, these might be from uh, you know one to three inches um, 
and uh, the seeding and, f and flowering occurs late in the season. So it's uh, late September right now, and we're seeing these in seed, and the seeds are uh, just starting to become um, loose and drop off. Stillgrass, uh, because it's an annual plant, is very shallow rooted, and so it's quite easy to pull. So I'm gonna lean down and demonstrate um, that if you grab a, a clump of stilt grass in your hand, it pulls up really easily. I've got a little native shrub here, but it pulls up real easily from the ground. And um, let's see if I've got a good example here um, where you can see how it uh, has shallow roots that can sort of trail along the ground. I didn't get a super example of trailing, but you can see that the roots are very shallow. So it pulls up very easily as opposed to some of our native grasses, which are perennial. And so they have much deeper, more established root systems that don't um, pull so easily. So that can be another helpful ID characteristic. Thanks for watching this uh, video today about stilt grass. It is an invasive plant that we're really concerned about and we found it fairly early now and hope to be able to eradicate it. Eradication doesn't happen very often. And if you can give us really early warnings and find these plants, uh, there are situations where they can be eradicated. And this particular one is just one that is such a big threat to the forest. So hopefully you'll be able to identify this in the future. And if you have any questions, you can always get in touch with either the horticulture program or the Maine Natural Areas program at the Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry.